Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture on statistical mechanics. Today we're going to consider a bosonic system inside a harmonic drop. What this means is we're going to have a system of non-interacting bosons and the single particle energies of these bosons uh, are going to be those of an isotropic harmonic oscillator. So the single particle energies will be equal to h bar omega ax plus ay plus az plus three halves, where a, x, y, and z are natural numbers. Okay. So we're working with um, an indefinite number of uh, bosons. So we are in the grand canonical ensemble. And so in the GCE, we have a grand canonical partition function. And this is equal to a sum over the number of particles times the fugacity e to the beta mu to the power of the number of particles. So the fugacity gives you the weight to which we give a configuration with n particles times the canonical partition function but we can write that as a sum over n a over a set of n a's which are the occupations of each state a right so for example n a1 tells me the number of bosons in state A1, okay? It tells me the number of bosons in this state. So I'm summing over all of the occupation numbers of the states such that their total sum is n, okay? So I'm looking at all the ways, I'm summing over all of the possible occupations of the state uh, such that the sum of the occupations is n. Then we get e to the minus beta e, um, and then I guess n a, right? This is the total energy of the system with this uh, configuration of occupations. Now, uh, what do we know? We know that, first of all, n is equal to the sum over all of the states of the occupation of each of these states uh, by definition. And we also know that e and a is equal to, again, a sum over states of the number of states times the single particle energy of that state. Okay, so I'm looking at how many energies occupy this state and then multiplying it by the corresponding energy. So I can plug these into here. And so then I get a sum over n e to the beta mu sum of n a times uh, the sum over n a n e to the minus beta sum of n a e a a. Okay, now here I'm summing over all of the possible number of bosons and then I'm summing over all of the configurations occupation numbers um, such that their sum is equal to n. But this is just the same as doing a sum over all of the occupation numbers, right? This is sort of like saying, okay, with n equals one, this is the set of all the possible occupations. With n equals two, this is the set of all the occupations. And essentially I'm, I'm summing over all of these occupation numbers in the end, right? I'm summing over all of the possible occupation numbers. So these two sums just become one sum. And then we get exponential of beta mu um, sum over a and a minus beta sum 
over A and A E A. Right? This is the exponential of a sum, so we can bring it out and get a product. So this is sum over an A product over A of E to the beta, sorry, E to the minus beta, E A minus mu. All of this uh, to the power of N A. And okay, now here is when we use the fact that these are bosons. So with bosons, right, remember with bosons, N A can be 0, 1, 2, etc. While with fermions, N A can be either 0 um, or 1. Okay, you can't buy the Pauli exclusion principle. Um, so what this tells me is I can write this as a sum over A, uh, sorry, a product over A, sum over N A, right, which goes from zero to infinity of E to the minus beta E A minus mu, all to the power of N A. And this is a geometric sum and we know that this, so this converges if we have that this, um, the e to the minus beta e a minus mu, if this is less than one. Okay, so converges if e to the minus beta um, e a minus mu is less than one. Technically, I should take the absolute value, but the absolute value of an exponential is just exponential. Um, when is this satisfied? This is satisfied when mu is less than e a for all a. Okay. Um, but this means uh, that mu must be less than the zero point energy. So it must be less than um, three h bar omega over two, right? Which is just defined as the zero point energy E zero. Okay, so this has to be satisfied for this sum here to converge. And if it is satisfied, uh, then we just find that this is equal to, again, the product over A of one over one minus E to the minus beta E A minus mu. Okay, so this is our grand canonical partition function. Now, in its current form, it's not very useful but uh, we can, because of this product, right? If we were able to turn this product into a sum, then we could actually evaluate something. And we can do that if we take the log of this. So if we take the log, taking the log, gather the log of the partition function, the product becomes a sum, uh, but we get a minus because this is a fraction of one over something. So it becomes minus sum over A of the log of the denominator. There we go. This is still a bit hard to calculate because of the log. The log doesn't allow us to sum over AX, AY and AZ separately. Um, what we can do is we can take the high temperature limit. So in the high temperature limit, beta goes to zero, right? In this case, then the log of one minus X can be, well, actually, 
um, yeah, we'll, we ha we'll use a high temperature limit later. First of all, we can, yeah. So first of all, we can use a power series expansion. Um, so this log of one minus something can be expanded um, as a sum over x to the power of n over n, right? Uh, where here n goes from uh, 1 to infinity, right? So this is a power series expansion and this, um, and there should be a minus here, yeah. And this is true if the absolute value of x is uh, less than or equal to 1. But we have already verified that, we're, we've already assumed it here, right? We have already assumed that exponential is less than 1. So we know that uh, this power series expansion is valid in the approximation we have taken. So this becomes the minus cancels out sum over a, or better, sum over n, sum over a, um, 1 over n, e to the beta mu n, e to the minus beta e a n. Um, this doesn't depend on the sum, so we take it out. This doesn't depend on the sum, this doesn't depend on a, so we can take it out of this sum. e to the beta mu n over n. And now I can write this as sum over ax, ay, and az of e to the minus beta h bar omega axn, e to the minus beta h bar omega ayn, e to the minus beta h bar omega n a z n, then e to the minus beta e zero n, where e zero is the zero point energy, which we defined here. Okay, this, um, this right here is a sum and we can write it as um, as the following. So again, beta mu n over n. Note that the sum over ax, the sum over ay, and the sum over az, um, they're all the same sum, really. So I'm just taking the product of three sums that are equal to each other. So this is just the sum over a, um, e to the minus beta h bar omega a n to the power of 3, right, times e to the minus beta e is 0 n. Now this is, uh, this is just uh, a geometric sum. We know it converges, and indeed it does converge to um, the following. So again, we have the same things. Um, this becomes one over one minus e to the minus beta h bar omega n to the power of three, then e to the minus beta e zero n. Okay, next, we now do need to use the high temperature approximation. So in the high temperature limit, right, we have that beta goes to zero. And in this case, then this um, exponential, 
or vi actually this whole fraction can be expanded as a Taylor series. Um, so this, the minus three, right, is this thing in the brackets, is approximately equal to one minus one minus beta h bar omega n, right, to second order, or to first order, uh, but this is equal to beta h bar omega n to the minus three, okay, so this whole thing is well approximated in the high temperature limit by this. So this becomes one over beta h bar omega to the power of three, sum over n. Um, now we also make another definition. We define the fugacity as z, right, so e to the beta mu. So this becomes a sum of z times e to the minus beta e0, all of this to the power of n, over n to the fourth. This is uh, quite nice because we recognize this sum as a Bose-Einstein function. This is the fourth Bose-Einstein function of z e to the minus beta e0. Okay, so in conclusion, this is equal to um, one over beta h bar omega to the third g4 z e to the minus beta e0. Wonderful. So we've got the log of the partition function and we can use this to find the grand canonical potential. So the GCE potential, right, is equal to one minus one over beta times the log of the partition function. So this is equal to minus one over beta to the fourth h bar uh, omega to the, f uh, sorry, one over h bar omega to the third g four z e to the minus beta e zero. Okay. One thing to note is, I forgot to mention this, we could also derive uh, this result, right, from here on onwards, from here onwards, we could have um, approximated this as an integral. In the high temperature limit, um, this sum over all of the states becomes uh, as an integral because the energy gap between states is much smaller than the thermal fluctuations in the system. And in that case, uh, well, what would we find? So this is sort of a parallel calculation, which is useful. For example, in the case of just three bosons, this approximation is used. So uh, then this would be equal to, well, would be well approximated. Um, by uh, minus the In, um, so minus sum uh, or plus, sorry, there's no plus here. So I'm taking this right here, right? So it's plus e to the beta mu n over n, right? So this is a sum over n times the integral or triple integral, right? One over ax, one over az, and one over ay, right? And these range from zero to infinity. Uh, 
of um, e to the minus beta h bar omega ax n and so forth right same for a y and a z the ax the a y the a z so we've approximated the sum as an integral now this is just an integral multiplied three times over so this is the sum of e to the beta mu n over n integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus beta h bar omega a n d a to the power of three and i think i forgot the zero point energy yeah times the zero point okay uh, now this integral very easy it's one over minus beta h bar omega n um, times e to the minus beta h bar omega a n where a goes from zero to infinity so we have to take this difference right here now with infinity this becomes zero uh, with zero this becomes one so it's a minus one uh, which cancels out with this minus, so we get 1 over beta h bar omega n. And so this becomes 1 over beta h bar omega to the third sum over n z, right, the fugacity here, z, times e to the minus beta e0 all to the power of n over n to the fourth which is exactly what we found before, only that we did it in three steps and we didn't have, uh, we didn't have to do the Taylor expansion, although we did have to take the high, um, the high temperature limit. Um, one thing to note, however, is that in this integral, there is one state that doesn't contribute to the log, and that state is the ground state, right? Uh, because we have the, this measure right here, the ground state does not contribute um, because since a is equal to zero. This will become important later on, okay? But just keep that in mind. So we are taking the approximation where we're assuming that the ground state doesn't give any macroscopic contribution. Great. Now, this allows us to calculate a lot of useful quantities, uh, namely the average number of bosons, right? The average number of bosons. Okay, so here we go into a new section about bosons and condensates. Okay, so the average number of bosons, uh, this is equal to minus the derivative, the partial derivative of the GCE potential with respect to the chemical potential. Um, so this is minus one over beta to the fourth, one over each bar omega to the third, partial derivative of sum over n z actually i do have to write that z as an exponential e to the beta mu e to the minus beta e zero to the power of n over n to the fourth okay so we're taking the derivative with respect to mu so this n beta will come out so the beta will cancel out with one of the betas here so we will get minus one over beta cubed. Um, actually, it's a plus because this minus comes out with this minus. So it's a plus one over beta cubed, one over h bar omega cubed. And then we also got an n that came out, which cancels out with one of the n's here. So it becomes sum over n, e to the beta mu, e to the minus beta e zero to the power of n over n cubed. Uh, but this is another Bose-Einstein function, right? It's a third order 
Bose Einstein function. So 1 over beta h bar omega cubed g3 z e to the minus beta e0. Okay, so this is the average number of bosons in the high temperature limit. Okay. Um, now let's look at one particular case. Um, if you look at the Bose-Einstein function, right? These Bose-Einstein functions um, are bounded above, right? So, as the argument of the Bose-Einstein function, z e to the minus beta e zero, right? As it approaches 1, uh, this Bose-Einstein function takes its maximum value. So Z is, this takes max value. Okay? Which is quite weird because what this means is the number of bosons in, in your system is bounded above. Uh, which is not, which doesn't make sense. Uh, so we should look at what happens in the limit as this uh, approaches one. Okay, but remember, we have to be careful because we assumed previously that uh, the z times e to the minus beta e a is less than one. So we're essentially saturating this condition of convergence. We're seeing what happens when we get very close to violating this condition. Yeah, this is essentially what we're doing here. Um, okay, so, so let's, let, let's look at what happens. So let's just insert here, let's set it equal to one, right, and see what happens. So for this value, we get that the average number of bosons is beta h bar omega cubed g31 uh, but this is just the zeta function, so it's 1 over beta h bar omega cubed times the zeta function of, of 3, okay? Um, okay. Um, let's look at what temperature this occurs at, right? So we, we, these are all constants. Uh, but but the temperature um, the temperature isn't that something that we can change uh, quite easily. Uh, so in this case, we have that the temperature cubed um, is equal to the h bar cubed omega cubed k b cubed and. times um, n over epsilon uh, zeta three, right? And we can now take the the cube root of this, right? So this is sort of at a critical temperature, right? So I'll call it n c. Um, so the critical temperature is equal to h bar omega kb, right, this is also known as the Einstein temperature, mm, times the critical number of, um, of bosons, right, which is sort of the upper bound, if you think about it, right, over Uh, at zeta 3 to the one third. Okay, this is very useful. Uh, now, interestingly, zeta 3 turns out to be around 1.06, so it's quite close to 1. Uh, so, as a rule of thumb, you can remember that for this system, the critical temperature is approximately uh, h bar omega kb times n to the one third, okay? And c, the critical number of bosons. Okay, so what does this mean? 
Well, this is telling me that at this critical temperature, right, um, this average number of bosons gets its, its largest value. And as I go below this critical temperature, I am breaking the high temperature con limit or the high temperature approximation uh, that I took previously. And so this expression for n is not going to be correct anymore, right? And the only way that's possible is if there's something missing here. And if you recall, that missing thing is the effect of the ground state, right? Right here in this calculation, we assume that the, G, the ground state didn't give a meaningful macroscopic contribution, which is through in the high temperature limit. But as we go below this temperature, right? So as we get very close to getting uh, this value of one, the ground state starts getting occupied more and more, right? And as the ground state gets more and more occupied, there's going to be a larger and larger missing contribution here. Until at this critical temperature, that contribution um, becomes macroscopically large. And so this result breaks down. So if we want it to be correct, we should write that this n right this n right here is only giving me the occup the number of excited bosons right because it's missing the ground state okay and so that makes sense that means that there's an upper bound to how many excited bosons you can put in your system indeed if you're below this temperature right this is the maximum number of excited bosons right this is the max number of excited bosons. So if you try to add more bosons to your system, they will accumulate in the ground state. So to conclude, the correct way to write the number of bosons, the average number of bosons would be this. So this is the number of excited bosons. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but then we should add the number of bosons in the ground state. That's equal to one over E to the uh, beta mu E to the minus beta E zero uh, minus one. Okay, so this is what gives you the um, the the number of bosons in the ground state. Okay, um, which is vanishingly small above this temperature, right? And so there you go. So this is sort of the end of this calculation. So you can have bosons and condensation in this system of bosons in a harmonic trap. And, and, and this is the critical temperature at which this happens.